Hi, my name is Janet Arberg and today is October the 15th, 2009 and I'm visiting with Virginia Adams Simrod in Stillwater, Oklahoma. This interview is for the O State Story Project of the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program. Hi Virginia. Hi there. Uh, I want to welcome you back to the campus for the Women of Willard WOW reunion. And let's just kind of start off and, and can you tell me about your early life, where you grew up, you know, your family and your school? I can, glad to. I grew up on a farm out in northwest Oklahoma, Fargo, Oklahoma, not even in the town on the farm. I was, I am the oldest of four children and my father was a wheat farmer. Uh, this was during the World War II years, too, when I was a small child, and uh, he, uh, along with none of our neighbors, he had to go to the war and, and fight uh, because he was a farmer, and farmers, uh, I believe, were not called because they were needed for production of food and uh, other materials for, for war, wartime efforts. Um, there, I can see there were two younger brothers, and when I was 10 years old, we had a third younger brother. But our life was just like anyone else's lives in our neighborhood. Uh, we didn't have television. We didn't have a bicycle. Uh, I shouldn't concentrate on what we didn't have, because we had lots of other things. Uh, we didn't know that the rest of the world was maybe watching a little bit of television when we were children. Uh, our interest in anything was from the radio. That's what you uh, where you uh, heard some programs that were kind of designated for children. Um, we were very active uh, in everything that went on in our little school. Um, I was in a class of 15. Um, we all pretty well all went from first grade through 12 together. And interestingly, most of our parents had gone to school a generation before. So, uh, it was a very comfortable, very uh, uh, wonderful life. I, I didn't know anything any different. I didn't know, uh, we didn't travel a lot because our relatives lived near at least 30 or 40 miles away, so we involved no overnight travel. Um, we had uh, a really nice church, little country church that we attended, and then we later went into town to church. And I went to school in the town the entire 12 years that I went to school, although there was a country school just a mile away from our farms. But my father had chosen to um, make it possible for me to go into the town school. He really didn't want me going to this rural school of only five students in eighth grade. So I was able to always go to school in town, ride the school bus, and uh, Truly, have, and of course, high school years were very wonderful with sports and music and 4-H and church. and So it all contributed to a very well-balanced life. Uh, I have no regrets having grown up in a small rural area in western Oklahoma. Uh, can you tell us what influenced you to attend OSU and what year did you enroll? Um, I, I, I just know almost exactly what influenced me to attend OSU. Uh, as I mentioned, um, I was in 4-H work, and when you were like 12 years old in 4-H, if you did certain things in qualified, you could come to what was then Oklahoma A&M for a, a four days of what called 4-H Roundup. And I think I was a seventh grader when I was able to make that trip, and I decided that week, this is where I'm going to college, there was no wavering. Um, my roommate uh, in college, whom you will interview next, was also uh, not from the same county that I was from, but we were there together and we decided then we were gonna room together at Oklahoma State. And it, there, it was just a foregone conclusion that that's where I was going. Uh, I didn't ever, some of my teachers in high school thought maybe I should consider one of the smaller, what were called teachers colleges. Um, around and I just said, absolutely no way, this, this is where I'm going. And I enrolled in, uh, as soon as we could enroll, my roommate and I enrolled in college, and we started the fall of 1955. Uh, I can't be for sure when we enrolled, but as soon as we possibly could, we were enrolled at Oklahoma State, Oklahoma a and did, did you have a major in mind when you came Oh, yes. 
Yes, uh, you know, this is a time when women pretty much majored in home economics, business, or nursing. And I knew I probably wanted to be a teacher and that I would like to be a teacher of home economics. And so very, because of my interest in 4-H and those kinds of uh, projects that tended to be in the home ec field. And uh, that's also where many other of my friends were also pursuing a degree in home economics. So again, there was just, there was, that's just what it was going to be. <laughs> and so there was no wavering, no second thoughts, no second guesses, anything about it. And the other thing that, now remember by this time I'm a teenager, and I had heard that the ratio of young men to young women at Oklahoma State was like four to one. <laughs> so this was very attractive. <laughs> Uh, well, okay, so you arrived in Stillwater. What was your first impressions of the campus and of the town? You know, I don't remember much about the town because, of course, we didn't have cars, so everything was um, related to the campus. And I just remember thinking, of course, I'd been there now almost every spring for 4 H Roundup until I went to college. I just remember thinking it was just the most wonderful place in the in the world, there wasn't any place that was any more wonderful than Stillwater, Oklahoma. And uh, uh, the one thing that was kind of interesting to me, now I remember I've spent my growing up years out in the northwest part of the state where it's rather barren. We don't have trees, too much, an awful lot of wind and dust and dirt. And Stillwater had trees and flowers and beautiful, beautiful landscaping, beautiful new buildings because the Union was finished in like either 51 or 54. So here's a brand new uh, building that has, uh, I think, national, it's nationally recognized. The same with the library. Beautiful, beautiful building. So uh, I just thought it was the most wonderful place that ever could be, and there wasn't any other college that could even come close. <laughs> Um, well, you lived in Willard Hall, and can you tell us uh, what years you did live in Willard Hall? I lived in Willard Hall my freshman year and my sophomore year. Okay. And then I had pledged a sorority and I moved off into the sorority house. But we also had stayed, as I recall, in Willard Hall for a lot of these 4-H events. And so uh, my roommate and I just... Like I say, probably seventh and eighth graders, we said, this is where we're going to live, Willard. And we wanted to live in Willard because of its proximity at that time to almost everything else on the campus. And uh, again, I, I it seems like getting into Willard was a little bit difficult. Uh, in other words, you needed to get your name on the list right early. So again, as soon as the information came out, and of course we didn't have email and computers and all that to let us know when the deadlines were, but as soon as we knew any of the deadlines, we got ourselves enrolled and, and placed in Willard Hall. Uh, were you assigned to Willard Hall, or did you specifically request Willard? We specifically requested Willard, yes. And at that time, Stout Hall was quite new, and a lot of young women wanted to live in Stout because it was the newest of the dorms. But no, we wanted to be in Willard. And as I recall, the thing that was kind of attractive too in Willard is that all the rooms had sinks in them. Now, there are no, you know, it's a, a communal uh, showers and bathroom, but Willard Hall rooms had sinks. So that was an attraction to us too. It, it's interesting what, you look back, what, what really made a difference to you, but a sink in a, in a dorm room must have been real important. So uh, what was your first impression of Willard Hall? I mean, when you first arrived and you walked in? Oh, I, I thought uh, the, particularly the, uh, what would be the living, open area living space was just gorgeous. You know, here's a beautiful grand piano and beautiful uh, chair arrangements, I just thought, and overlooked Theta Pond then, so the this view was very, very lovely, and I thought it was just probably almost like a palace. Uh, what was your room like? Can you describe that for us? I don't think it was very big, and the beds weren't bunked, and we didn't loft them or anything. We had two bunk, two twin beds, 
two small closets, and in between the closets uh, was the sink. And we must have had a desk, each had a desk and a chest of drawers. Uh, it, it was very adequate for us because now we've come, for the most part, from families where we've shared rooms. You know, we haven't had our own room at home. I don't think, if any of us had our own room at home, I maybe did because I was the only girl in our family. But most of my friends shared their rooms with siblings, and we certainly didn't have our own bathroom. Uh, we didn't have our own telephone. Uh, we didn't have a TV. Uh, so this dorm room just looked quite adequate. And I believe we were on second floor, and we could climb out the window and get on the uh, the roof of the of the porch below, and that was a good place to sunbathe if you so desired. <laughs> I'm not sure we were supposed to do that, but it happened. <laughs> um, what was it like trying to have a personal conversation on the floor phone? Oh my, that's really interesting. Um, first of all, there was, I can recall, there were, the, the dorm was in a U shape, so each of the sides of the U had maybe one phone on each of those wings and then one phone in the center ring. So uh, one of those phones, there was a closet a kind of a little telephone booth, so that wasn't, uh, you could have a little privacy there, but uh, otherwise, any everyone knew exactly what was going on in your life, and if you were being asked out by someone, you know, whoever answered the phone maybe would recognize who it was, and so, um, you know, we didn't spend a whole lot of time on the telephone just to make dates and, and go out. So was there, I'm kind of curious by, the, by this question in the sense, was there was so many women in this, this, uh, in this dorm? And so how did you decide who was going to answer the phone? Just whoever was, generally, I think the second year, my roommate and I moved from one location to another. And the, our, the second year I was in Willard, our room was very near the phone. <laughs> so... So you Typically, got phone duty. You, you get, but there was no signing of phone duty. And sometimes no one answered it, but uh, generally someone would answer. Or they would holler down the hall, please answer that, I'm expecting a call. So it was, it was a lot of give and take. Did it ring a lot? I mean, uh, considering the number of women in the, the dorm? Uh, you know, I don't recall that it did. It probably rang a lot between about 5 and 8 o'clock okay. in, the, in the afternoon and evening. Because for the most part, we were not there during the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it wasn't like one would think it would be that it's ringing all the time. And uh, probably at 8 o'clock, uh, the phones, I, I, don't, I don't think that they could be used because now we're in school during the time that we have to be in at 8 o'clock on weeknights. And um, I, I think it must have been 12.30 on weekends. So... Uh, at those at the eight o'clock hour, a lot of things uh, were not able to go through, and I, I don't remember that the phone rang at eight o'clock. Okay. So, uh, was there a common shower and restroom area on your floor, and uh, how many women shared the facility, and what was that like? Yes, there was. Um, mm, there must have been thirty or forty women that shared that one facility. There was. There was a common shower in common lavatories on each wing. So, and I don't know if there were a half a dozen showers in, uh, uh, you know, at least that many stools and tubs. Um, I, it, it worked. You just, you, you made it work. You know, we, we weren't accustomed to having our own anyway. So you just kind of learned. And, and, as freshmen, we discovered we were given a lot of eight o'clock classes. Well, you rised up as you got another year or two under your belt that you didn't take eight o'clock classes. So we probably had use of the shower at seven o'clock almost exclusively, you know, the freshmen did because no one else was there. And I honestly don't remember, I mean, this hygienically maybe doesn't sound very well, but I don't remember it. And I think that probably we took showers every day, but that just wasn't routine okay. then. And shampooing your hair, mm -hmm. I happen to have naturally curly hair, and I remember the the gals on the dorm just wanted to throttle me because I never did have to pin up my hair. 
but every one of them and every evening had little pin curls or rollers in their hair and, and I could just sort of breeze through and not be too concerned about my hair. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> was Willard considered to be a popular or a prestigious hall at, at that time, and why? I, I really think it was. Um, I, it's been fun to go back and look in the yearbooks that I have <clears throat> from past years. And like I said, the Stout Hall was brand new. But Willard, in the write-ups about Willard Hall in these old yearbooks, mentions a lot of women who were very prominent on campus resided in Willard and would often list who they were. And uh, I, I think its its location was was prime in that. And it was a beautiful, it is a beautiful old Georgian architect uh, style and uh, was uh, with the, now this is close to the time, like I say, the Union was just built. So Willard is very close to the Union and the Union was certainly a hub of Lots of things. Uh, so, uh, because we walked everywhere. So that was real important to be where you didn't have quite such a long walk. Well, in your mind, what set Willard apart from the other women halls in the night, late 1950s? Uh, you described some of those. Things. And I think, and I was also <laughs> noticing in there that it was one of the few that had its own meal service. Um, at that time, there was Murray Hall and something else. I, I did not recall that, but again, that's probably one of the things that made Willard um, be a more prestigious dorm to you because you, you had meal service there. I'm sure Stout Hall had meal service, but uh, I just didn't recall that people from some of the other dorms had to come over to Willard to dine, and that would have not worked for my friends and I, we, we wanted everything right there, and we were fortunate to have it all right there. Uh, who was your dorm mom, and what do you remember about her? Well, I remember a lady named Virginia Pryor. Um, there was a, I, I don't remember a whole lot about them. Uh, one or two, I, I noticed from the yearbooks, it looked like Willard had a different hall dorm mom every year, so I don't know if we sort of wore them out or what. The one that was there my freshman year, I think had been there many, many years, and she later retired. Uh, they were kind of um, like your grandmother, and a few of them were a little bit uh, cranky, and so you, you kind of wanted to stay out of their, their paths, and you hoped, hoped that you didn't ever, ever have to be called into their offices. So it wasn't a real... Uh, uh, you know, they were there and we were here, and uh, so it wasn't, I don't recall a real warm, fuzzy feeling about them, but uh, perhaps it, it was there. I'm sure for our parents, it was absolutely a total safeguard to know that these ladies were in their place and that we would be closely monitored, and, uh, you know, our dorms were locked at... Uh, on weeknights, they were open till 10.30, but as freshmen, we had to be in at 8 o'clock un until we made certain grade points. Then we could get out only to go to the library on Monday through Thursday night. So, and I, I, fortunately, my parents were never called that I didn't get in, but I believe there was a system by where, you know, if you weren't in, there was bed check, and if you weren't in, and you were known not to be in, there were some penalties to pay. And uh, Now, I remember this is, I'm a product of the 50s when our goal in life was to be pleasers. Mm -hmm. And so we wouldn't have, mo most of the friends I was with, and wouldn't have done anything to have uh, caused any embarrassment for our families or any embarrassment for our friends that we weren't, that we weren't in <laughs> on, properly on the right time. Uh, well, did the dorm mom proctor this, or was it a student that uh, They had the student check? proctors on every floor, and, and what were they called, resident hall something. Um, there, but the night proctor was uh, a person that, uh, she did a lot of it, I think, but students did some of it. Students who were upperclassmen did some of this. Was the term wow properly used in the late 1950s, uh, or do you know when it was first used? 
I never heard of it until more recently. So no, we didn't. We didn't uh, uh, use that term at all. Uh, just just Willard. And our own group, yeah, we call ourselves Willard too, because most all of us live on the second floor of Willard. So we're Willard too. Okay, I would like to discuss some of the wow traditions with you. Uh, the first one is, uh, what was the Willard Beach and what took place there? I don't know what the Willard Beach is. So, uh, something about sunbathing? Uh, don't know about that one? I don't know about that one, except that perhaps, like I said, some of the rooms on second floor had access to okay. the roofs. And okay. so that, that may be something that... Uh, it was after my time too. <laughs> okay. uh, were there some, oh, excuse me, were there some Christmas traditions? You know, I don't remember any decorating. I know that we were expected to, or ask or if we wanted to decorate our dorm doors. And of course we all did. Um, there were, there were probably, uh, I, I know there was a, I think a seasonal dance every, um, maybe a couple times a year, maybe not seasonal, uh, that Willard Hall sponsored. But I don't remember so many of those things that we would have invited men in to do. Um, I remember more, you know, we just kind of made our own entertainment and our own fun in the dorm and had some really crazy times that are, uh, we look back and laugh now, you know, how crazy we were, but uh, those were, the, those were some of the things that were fun. Uh, I think we participated, we had, we, I know we had athletic intramural teams, uh, and I think each floor probably had basketball, because I remember playing on the basketball team, uh, probably played on a softball team, uh, but we were very active in that role, because uh, most of my friends were like me. We'd gone to very small schools, and we'd all participated in a lot of sports. I think we participated in the sing that the campus had, um, you know, where you were the, uh, do a musical number. And uh, I, I don't think we ever participated in varsity review. I don't remember that we that we did. Uh, did Willard Willard participate in homecoming events and contests? Uh, I think we always did at least. I don't believe we ever did a float while I was there, but I think we did the. Uh, <coughs> decorating the dorm or some things like that but uh, of course you know it's all women and the men are busy working on their own and I, I, I don't recall that we ever had a float. Uh, what happened when a, uh, a WOW member became engaged? You know I don't know that I lived there because you now I've gone to the sorority by this time and I don't remember that. You know, I know what we did in the story, but I don't remember what we might have done at the dorm. Maybe some of the other gals, well, I wish I could tell you I knew. Uh, but there would just be a lot of screaming and hollering. It wasn't like uh, when someone got pinned or got engaged, asked to go steady or something. Um, it, it, you know, at the sorority house, we had a candle on there, yes. or maybe that you passed the candle around. And I don't remember that we did that in the dormitory, uh, at, at least. None of the people became, of my friends became engaged during the time I lived there. Can you tell us something about the scrapbooks that we all had, Kat? Uh, how long has the hall been doing them? Now, I don't know about the hall scrapbooks. I know we personally, okay. a lot, many of us have scrapbooks, but okay. I, and I don't even know when Willard Hall opened. I, I wonder if it was the early 30s. Um, and, uh, but Many of us have scrapbooks that we brought. So these are personal scrapbooks. These They're are not the, the scrapbooks of wild. The, the hall might have yeah. had scrapbooks. Uh, it seems like I kind of remember having seen some. Um, we all came back, and I don't know what year it was, when Willard Hall became the College of Education facility. And we, uh, many of us who are here now, came back for that uh, observation and celebration and one of the main reasons we came back is that we have lost two of our numbers um, very very young and early and we wanted to commemorate their 
memory and we were honored to be able to select some um, paintings, some nice artwork, and hang as nearly as possible in the section of the dorm where we lived. So, um, and I don't know if that was the early 90s or 86, something about 86 strikes in my mind. So I don't know if it was 1986 or when it was, but. Uh, what do you remember or what did you hear about the 1955 panty raid on Willard? Well, I, I wasn't there. <laughs> And I, the one thing I remember was just horrified. And would my parents let me go to college now there because this horrible thing had happened? And would they possibly hear about this and just uh, negate my going there to college? Uh, that didn't happen. But uh, it, it was fun to, kind of fun. I, it, to me, I would have been a little frightened. Uh, this was kind of out of the realm of my uh, a comfort level, but uh, some of the gals who uh, are here now were there during that time, and, and I, I think it was a little bit frightening. Um, at first, you are, are tempted to be a real come on, and then when it happens, <laughs> you know what you're going to do with these men in your room going through your undies, but uh, it uh, certainly created a lot of clamor around the college, I think, at that time. <laughs> we did, uh, the one thing that my group of friends in the f spring of 19 or during the basketball season of 1957 Wilfa still was playing for KU and was an absolute powerhouse alone and they were playing OSU one night in February and OSU beat them by one point so we all were back in that we always went to all the basketball games and we came back in the dorm and started parading around the halls. We want to walk out, we want to walk out, we want to walk out. And a walk out did occur, but anyway, it, uh, it was uh, probably a rowdiness that we maybe shouldn't have done, but that was about as rowdy as we got, so I wouldn't say it was too bad. <laughs> uh, was there a dress code in the hall? I don't think so, not, I think if you left, but uh, in the, as you, um, were there, you could sort of relax and wear whatever you wanted to, but uh, uh, slacks and jeans and things just weren't worn a lot. I don't remember anyone wearing jeans much at all, except maybe to a Western style party or something, because we all wore skirts and sweaters and bobby socks and uh, loafers, and that's that was kind of the outfit. And, uh, uh, and uh, whether it was just what we did, uh, uh, as best I know, I don't remember that we had a real strict dress code. I think if anyone had been improperly dressed, according to the house director or the mon you know hall monitors, they would have been called uh, called about that. Uh, do you remember or do you, do you recall anything about a dress code at the library? I don't. Um, I, I remember that you were again, pretty much dressed like you go to class, and uh, you would not have shown up there in shorts or, uh, you know, t-shirts. You know, that just, those just weren't part of our uh, uh, clothing anyway. Uh, you, you might have gone over there, now see, after the first nine weeks, if freshmen had made a certain grade point, we could, we could get out and go to the library, and we, we did. But if we had anything any appropriate, we wore a raincoat or something and went to the library. But it was very, it was not a place where you saw people out of, out, out of their ordinary clothing at that time. Um, speaking of the library, um, it was a fairly new building at that time? Yes, it was. It was quite new. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure when it was finished, but it was, I believe it was there my first year in college. So it almost seems like it was finished in the early 50s also, and maybe before that. But yes, it was a gorgeous, gorgeous building, and we did utilize it a lot. Uh, our son went to college at Oklahoma State, you know, a generation later, and I asked him one time about the library, and he kind of paused a little bit, and he wasn't even sure where it was. <laughs> I thought, oh dear. <laughs> Things have changed. But we didn't have, of course, uh, 
even his day, he didn't have access to the computer like you do now, but that's the only place we had to get information was the library. Okay. Absolutely. You know, our textbooks. The dormitory had a, a little bit, uh, you know, a few resources, but nothing very extensive. So, no, we, we utilized the library a lot. Okay. Um, <clears throat> going to a different subject here. <laughs> Was PDA a public display of affection a serious infraction uh, when you were on campus? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I, I don't remember anything that happened to anyone, but we, um, you know, I think every little group has their own uh, code of conduct, and that was just unacceptable in our, our group. And uh, so it, it was not... It was not an issue for any of us. Uh, we uh, just would have been embarrassed to have been found courting okay. <laughs> just uh, anywhere. But but at 10.30 at night, the at 10.25 at night at the dorm, the lights would flash. And if people were in cars or on the sidewalk or anywhere, there was a lot of PDA then, but everyone went in and it was all over. But... Uh, that that would be the one time when there wasn't too much uh, guarding about what you were doing as you were saying good night to your date. <laughs> um, did you did the dorm did any of their dorms come and visit you uh, for an activity or did they share meals with you? Um, I have no recollection that any of the other dorms did. Um, now I think maybe some of the smaller men's dorms might have come over and serenaded us or something because I know that we did get serenaded uh, on occasion. And that, of course, goes along with the engagement, too. If the young man was in a fraternity, his fraternity might have come to Willard Hall and serenaded the young woman who was engaged to him. Um, I don't remember that we did, you know, much of anything else. We may have had some meals, meal exchanges. Um, but according to what I, like I say, what I saw in one of those yearbooks, the um, one of the dorms, ladies, women's dorms, didn't serve meals, so they would have just eaten there on a regular basis with us. How was the food? You know, as I recall, I thought it was just fine. Uh, now, you know, fast food isn't an issue at this point in my life. Uh, we've, there are very few of those kinds of things. So, so it's either eat in the dorm or you don't eat. So, you know, most of us were happy with the dorm food. I do remember that pizza had just come in onto the campus. And I remember one of the friends kept talking about we needed to go to this certain restaurant and have some pizza pie. And I had, the, I had a real difficult time ever understanding that she was saying, pizza pie and not piece of pie because they thought well what's the big deal about going to have a piece of pie I mean that's not but um, that uh, there was um, a young man I even can remember who he was that had um, he and some fellows in his fraternity had a service where he delivered sandwiches or something so there was the opportunity to call a few places to have a delivery of something if you wanted it. But, you know, for the most part, we didn't. Uh, our meals, and I think it was all meals except maybe Sunday night was the only night we'd have a meal in the dorm. And, you know, that was being paid for in our room and board. So, of course, that's where we ate. <laughs> was the name of this piece of pie place, <laughs> was it the hideaway? Well, do you recall? I think it was, uh, although there was a restaurant downtown, I think it was called Brown's, and I think that's one of the very, very first places that they had it. But I, I remember the hideaway, and I don't know if it's from my years or later on being aware of the hideaway, but yes, that would be one of the first ones that delivered. Is there any particular special memory that you have about Willard Hall that always stands out in your mind uh, when you think it back to those days? Probably more than anything was the um, the friendships that developed uh, and such happy times in that whole arena. Uh, that would be my my one 
you know, big memory of uh, what was of, of life in Willard. Um, did you have any tough times when you were in Willard? Was it something you experienced that you found very hurtful or negative? Or no, I didn't. Um, I, I, I really was uh, probably pretty naive. You know, I'm a freshman and a sophomore in college, and um, I, I would say that I'm uh, just enjoying everything that's going on and, um, you know, study the, the kinds of things that the classes I was in, somebody else was in those, so we had lots of sharing and lots of time to work on projects and, uh, and do all those kinds of things. So it wasn't like you were sort of alone in your classwork or anything. So, and the sophomores had been through what we were in the first year, so we had some built-in uh, mentors to uh, help us. And okay. so, uh, um, Was there diversity in Willard? Uh, by that I mean, was there ethnic and international students? There were a few international students on campus that uh, would have probably been uh, Asian. Um, but other than that, very little diversity. Um, I don't remember any persons of color, Negroes, although there was one person in our all of our home ec classes, but she didn't have to live in Willard. Uh, we were pretty a homoge homogeneous group. Um. Were you active in Willard or the, any of the OSU Women Resident Halls Associations, for example? Did you hold a, a hall, hall or floor position? Well, I didn't remember, but when I left in the yearbook, I saw that my sophomore year was treasurer of Willard Hall. I didn't, I didn't remember that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yes, we were all active in every little thing we could possibly be active in. Uh, the Greater Residence Hall, uh, I, I don't... I don't recall that I was contributed to that, but uh, um, yeah, we were very active on our floor, uh, participate in everything that came along. Did you work in the hall as a floor assistant or the front I desk? I did not. No. Okay. I did not. Uh, was there competitions between the floors? Yes. Athletic, intramural, and maybe even uh, some floor decorations because I noticed Again, in the yearbook, the fourth floor got to do something because they won some contest. So, so uh, yes, there was there was competition between among the floors. Did when you lived there, did they have any kind of etiquette? Did they try to uh, share with you, you know, train you in as far as uh, you when you ate in the dorms? There any kind of etiquette? I. I I don't recall that there did. Like that there of, you know, was. which fork to use? And no, not no. so okay. much of that. Okay. But, of course, we went through a line. Now, there might have been, if you sat at the table with the house mother, mm -hmm. you might have been exposed to that. Now, that really came about for me in the sorority house when that... But uh, routinely, I don't remember... Uh, again... We're gals of the 50s. We're going to do everything as right as we possibly can. You know, we're not, we're not, you know, if we, if, if we have the opportunity to sit down to a more formal meal with uh, all the different silverware and everything. And of course, again, most of us were in home economics and we're exposed to a lot of that okay. in our home ec classes too. Why have the WOW women stayed so close through the years and continue to have reunions even 50 years later? You know, I've, I've really pondered that because I didn't think anything about it. But as I've told people what I'm doing, they are just amazed. I think probably we're all from, we were all from very small towns in rural Oklahoma. Uh, many of us were the first one in our families to go to college. Um, we just were, we had such common interest and we were all bonded first of all through 4-H and being in Willard and then uh, many of us majored in the same field uh, we we were so much alike um, I don't have any sisters so these women were all sort of my sisters then we had our first reunion in 1969 10 years 
after we had graduated from college. And by that time, all of us are married. All of us have children about the same age. And we had such a good time then that we said, we've got to do this more often. So we've just made a real effort to do that. And uh, uh, I think we all uh, get together, and it's like 1955, some 50, the late 50s when we were all in college together. It's, it's such a rewarding, wonderful time. And we all share our faith has been very strong for all of us. There just are many bonding ingredients that, and we've all made an effort. Those who don't live in Oklahoma make a real effort to get back if that's where we're commuting. And of course, when we realized that we were not far from celebrating our 50th anniversary, we thought we will all get here for this. And I think there are going to be about 17 or 18 who, who have and will be here to be together. Now let me ask you this question, and I don't know if it's a fair question to ask you, but and you can decline if you'd like, but I'm kind of curious, you said you were in a sorority and you were in the residence hall. Of the two groups, which of the women have you stayed closest to? Interestingly, I stayed closest to the dorm group. Okay. Um, and can you tell me why? Well, I think it's probably our backgrounds. Okay. The, and um, several of us are from very uh, proximity out in you know western Oklahoma so sometimes we'd see each other uh, I, I might have seen my roommate at church where she's with her parents and I'm with my mother um, I, I have stayed close to two or three gals in the sorority but as far as an entire group of women I've stayed much closer to the dorm this is marvelous dorm gals how many reunions have you participated in and where Okay, the first one in 1969 was at, uh, oh, down by Altus. I can't think what the, what the uh, state park is called, but by, Al, by Altus. Then we had one in 1974, five years later, at Arrowhead. Then I think there was one at Romano's, maybe a couple at Romano's. I didn't get to those. Then came a span of time when we all had kids in high school, and it was just impossible to get together too much. So we were back here, and if it was 86 when Willard became the College of Education, we were back here for that. Then in 2002, in the, during the 90s, I don't know if we got together. Small groups of us did. I was at a convention in Arizona, and about five of us got together there. I think three or four of the people, but for the large group to get together. Then we had a reunion uh, where we live in South Fork, Colorado in 2002, and a lot of gals came. Then, then we said, we've got to do this in five years, and so we had a reunion in 2007 in Oklahoma City, kind of tagged on the end of the Big 12 tournament because some of us were there, and uh, then now. And the other thing I really thought about in my own heart is that our husbands all enjoy each other. So it's not just been the gals getting together, it's couples for the most part. And uh, that's probably unique in itself. Our husbands are very content to be with, uh, in fact, a lot of them went to college also and know each other. So they're very, uh, they have a good time together. Great. Uh, when Willard was converted to administrative use, um, how did you all feel about that? You know, I, I guess my thought is it's sure a lot better to do that than tear it down. <laughs> and that's certainly what happens some, sometimes to those charming old buildings. And uh, uh, I think it, uh, we probably all recognize that it no longer was the kind of housing that young women really desire. Uh, it needed to be uh, probably updated. And uh, we, were, we were kind of honored that the dorm where we lived was the one chosen to uh, serve this new purpose on the campus. Uh, did the WOW group participate in the renovation plans of Willard and did they lobby for maintaining the original living room spaces on the first floor? I wasn't a part of that. Uh, like I said, our role in it was to find some suitable memorials for the two women we had lost in our group and, um, and we did lobby to have that, those, that artwork put in the area where we lived, and so uh, that's as much, I think, as we did. What do you think about the new residence halls and apartment suites on the OSU campus? 
Have you I been have, in them? I have not been in them. But I think if they're meeting a need and they're staying filled, then they must be the right thing to do. Uh, young women now come to college having had their own bathrooms, their own bedrooms, their own TVs, all these things that were kind of foreign to us. So um, if that's uh, if that makes them happy and keeps them competitive with other major universities, then I say that's what needs to be done. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, campus life? Were there any student traditions or important activities of your era that really stand out? Well, one of the things I remember, um, I, I was in mortarboard and the mortarboard gals, and we were only women then, I understand it's co-educational now, rode bicycles, tandem bicycles during the homecoming parade. And so that was a real look forward to event. And then when I was able to be one of those doing that, that was great fun. Um, all of the different campus organizations, and many of us were very, very involved campus-wide and, and had some really nice experiences. So um, beyond that, I, I I just have good memories of all the things that went on. What year did you graduate in? 1959. And since that time, what have you been doing? <laughs> Can you share some highlights of your oh. life after leaving OSU, and where are you living now? We live in South Fork, Colorado. I, I married my husband the day we graduated from college. So uh, our lives began then. I taught school for uh, two or three years. Uh, then we had children. And we have moved lots of places. So uh, once we left the state of Oklahoma and I needed new credentials to enter the teaching field, I uh, only did some subbing and adult education. And, then we've lived in Texas, we've lived in Iowa, we've lived in Nebraska, and now we live in Colorado. So I've had a very full life being a volunteer with lots of things and on the national level and a couple of organizations that I was in. And so uh, that's really totally occupied me. Wonderful. Um, were there any classes that you especially remember or professors who stand out in your mind? Yes, Mary Cox in the Family Relations and Child Development, and I don't even know if she's still alive. I hope that she is. And Dr. Hoffer, and I know Dr. Hoffer is deceased, and again, the Family Relations and, and um, Relations, so uh, those would be. And then we lived in the Home Management House. As a Home Ec graduate, we lived in the Home Management House. I don't even know if that exists anymore. Tell us about that a little bit. <laughs> Really, <laughs> uh, it was a, a house that four or five of us to get our degree in home ec education. There were two houses at Stillwater, and you lived in this house with these other women and an advisor. And our advisor was Gertrude McAllister, and you lived there and ran the house, did the meals, the laundries, the cleaning, everything, and still went to class. And it was not a look forward to event in any home ec education degrees life. It was kind of dreaded. But I think we lived there for six weeks and uh, uh, it was just an interesting experience to say the least. Where was it located? Well, one of them was down on South, I don't know if it was Duck or Knobloch, and the one I was in was to the north uh, on past Farmhouse Fraternity, if it's still where it was. and. Uh, but this was to a culmination of putting all your um, classwork into action, planning meals, purchasing meals, making schedules. And sometime during that time that you were there, maybe several times, you were kind of the person in charge. So you made out the schedules and you scheduled everyone else. But uh, that was an interesting experience, which perhaps is no longer needed. <laughs> Um, what are some of the popular student hangouts that you liked to, to hang out when you were on campus? Do you remember any of those? The Union. The Union. The Union was probably. And then all, a lot of us were in uh, Wesley Foundation, and I think we hung out at Wesley Foundation. Okay. Uh, we didn't, again, we don't have cars, so we don't go very far. Maybe went up to the theater, which is the corner of Knobloch mm -hmm. and University. And I don't remember too many places up there where we hung out. But yeah, pretty much uh, we didn't make a real big wave and didn't have a real big path to 
swathed that we uh, swathed a path. What there. about dances? Where did you? Where did they have dances out on campus? In the Student union. union, and then I think we had dorm dances. Dorm dances. And then the fraternity and sororities had them, mostly off campus at various um, restaurants or places that you, where you could have these. So. Um, what are some of your favorite memories of your student experience? Would it be things like homecoming or um, your sorority life? Um, homecoming, um, uh, the parties on campus, uh, classes, uh, all the different activities that uh, we participated in, I would say would be real, uh, real top memories. Okay. Um, so you did participate in homecoming? Yes, particularly once it was in the sorority. Um, yes, we always, we usually did a float with another fraternity and we did uh, house decorations. We did everything that there was to do at that time, but it, it of course isn't nearly as extensive as it is now. Is there anything else you would like to add about your OSU experience that, that uh, stands out or want to comment on? I just, it was four of the most wonderful years of my life and uh, I just feel real um, indebted that my health has allowed me to get to this point that 50, year later, 50 years later we still can all get together and have such wonderful times. Um, there's one last question I, I remember. Uh, the president was Wilhelm President Wilhelm was the uh, president yes. of campus. Yes. My understanding, he tried to learn all the students' names. I did, think he probably did. he did. remember yours? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He did. Yeah. I think that's quite an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. He was a very uh, a gracious, you know, man that you would gladly walk up to and chat with. Chat with. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's all I have to add, unless you have anything. I don't think I do. I just want thank to thank you, you very much for thank coming. You. It's been a real pleasure to it's interview you. It's been fun you. to do this. And uh, thank you again. Okay.